Hello everyone, welcome back to the TJ Mega channel for day 1070 of our daily content grind. And once again, we're doing a tier list for a particular character, and today it's Ratchet. Now we've done a few things similar to this for Ironhide, never a tier list of his toys, but we've talked about a lot of these molds before, so a little bit of this might be repetitive, but we're pitting them all against each other. And for this list, I have taken all of the major Ratchet toys from across different universes, and we've dropped them into one pile for which we are about to judge them accordingly. We've got 21 in all. So for the sake of these lists, as usual, we are sticking to major mainline releases we're leaving out a lot of the gimmicky stuff though there are a few little oddballs here or there just for the sake of being fun and as usual we are in my traditional grading list which starts at the holy grail and then we work our way down from premium price retail release bargain bin and then finally the flea market level we don't want a toy to end up in the flea market level because that's where toys go to die for two dollars a pop so let us begin. And we are looking first at the animated side of Ratchet, and it starts with the Cybertronian version. It's a pretty solid mold from what I can remember. I'm not, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to remember if it could even roll, because I'm trying to remember that the, the way the treads were done were a little bit interesting. Uh, it doesn't matter, though. Uh, it's a unique look, and it makes for a pretty smooth figure. I like that toy overall. I can remember really, really liking that toy, both as Ratchet and as Ironhide. It's not spectacular. Like, it's a simple figure. Like, in animated, true to animated, it's very screen accurate. And it's very smooth in how it transforms. But I don't remember being the most complex or interesting thing to transform either. I think he's just a really good, solid figure that doesn't do a whole lot of weird stuff. Uh, I'm going to cautiously put him premium but i'm gonna aim for him to be on the low side of premium by the time we are done with this list but that does move us on to his earth counterpart ratchet himself uh that we know from the most of the series and this is where we get a little bit more impressive and have a lot more going on for starters he is an interesting design in that he comes out looking very round and even rotund in some areas um, he's got a belly because <laughs> he's just the old medic that's kind of had it. Um, his vehicle in, this is in contrast to his vehicle mode, which is boxy, but they managed to keep the boxiness just to a few panels off of his shoulders. They're out of the way there, so I don't mind them. And I really like how the toolbox is done, where you have a bunch of C-clip tools in the back that you, know, you can just uh, switch in between. Uh, yeah, it's a really, really good toy. It's a really, really good toy and a very characterful toy, which Animated was great at. I'm going to cautiously put it up in Holy Grail. I think it's one of the better Ratchet figures. It's a really, really good toy. Also, you can see I'm trying to uh, keep up. If I miss a slide, I do apologize. Uh, we're moving on to Botcon Ratchet. This was the first modern Ratchet figure, you know, modern now. Uh, that we had had since Generation 1, and it was a retool of Energon Towline, which if you know me, if you've heard this channel of you know more than once, I actually really enjoy that toy. Getting it as Ratchet, I felt like completed the whole package, because the whole idea behind Energon Towline is it's this kind of weird homage to the original van transformers and the battle skid, like little sled that they all that they had. It's kind of playing to that play pattern again. So bringing it back to being Ironhide and Ratchet was a perfect thing to do. And they kind of make for good, like, younger-looking styles for Ratchet and Ironhide. They're not nearly as bulky. But I do think it's a really, really good use of the figure. I And I actually think it works better as Ratchet than Ironhide because it works with, uh, that platform works better as I think it's like a medical platform. You know, like it's like a like emergency treatment than it does like a battle sled or anything. It's not as well armed as like the G1 version was. So yeah, premium price he goes. He is actually really, really good. Very, very suited retooling of an old figure. All right, this is Core Ratchet from the 86, uh, actually just Studio Series Core class. This one's innocent. 
This one's not doing anything egregious. It's just a quick, simple, small style ratchet figure. It's not doing anything like tremendously impressive for its size outside of just like, oh, it's a full van out of a tiny toy. That's at least worth a few points in my book. But it's not doing anything tremendous for its price point. It's not doing anything like super special. I think it's a good retail release. I think it's a good middle ground figure. Does what I expected to for 10 bucks. And you know, considering the tiny little things they will sell at core class at $10 a pop, I think that's decent. You know, I I, I, th I think he's not doing anything that egregious. I feel like I got what I paid for with him. We're moving into movie ratchets now. Uh, and since this list was put, uploaded in alphabetical order, that means we start with the Dark of the Moon ratchet. I actually like a lot of the Dark of the Moon toys better than I do Revenge of the Fallen toys because there was something about moving the gimmick because the the gimmick the figures themselves weren't gimmicked. That was the trick. Only their weapons were and those were completely external. Marketing wise, it's a scheme to get us used to these toys being a little bit smaller now that their gimmick is their accessory weapon rather than the main figure. So the main figure was a little bit tinier. That was the trick. That was how they kind of shrunk the toys down one more notch without you really noticing. But I think the engineering got to shine that way. I think the engineering on a lot of the Dark of the Moon toys was better than the Revenge of the Fallen toys that fell into the trap of being way overly complicated. So um, I still think it's a good figure. I think it'll be high retail release. I like it better than some of the other Ratchet figures, but not all of them. Not all of them. Uh, here's where we're going to get into a little bit of disappointment. This is the Earthrise Ratchet, and I've never been a fan of this one. So remember, this is the retool of the Siege version. So uh, the Iron Hide was easier to get, even though that was like a rare Amazon two-pack thing. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the Ratchet they did with the with the Lifeline, the Paradron Medic. It's a boring Ratchet. It's a really boring Ratchet. A lot of the plastic was done in gray instead of red. It, it robs him of a lot of color. So he just really looks very flat, monotone. Uh, just, it's a very dull take on Ratchet. Now, a major aspect about this figure, as opposed to the Siege version, was the top of the van, which they used to fill out the shape of the G1 vehicle mode. But in order to make that work in the robot mode, it just comes off and becomes a shield. Now, for Ironhide, I can kind of accept that because he's a security officer character. A big riot shield for him makes sense. For a medic, not so much. Maybe a field medic that needs to get on and off of a battlefield with an injured Autobot, but Ratchet's never really been depicted that way, so it's, it just feels like a... Ugh. So... I don't know. I, I feel like the mold is a bad choice. I, well, it's not a bad choice, obviously. It's an Ironhide mold. But yeah, I, I feel like the presentation works better for Ironhide than it does Ratchet. And then you just add in those dull colors and like, yeah, now you got to release. It just upsets me. The G1 Ratchet is always a sticking point because, okay, sticker head doesn't look like the animation model. Okay, I get it. We will acknowledge for the hundredth time on this channel the animation accuracy is not fair to the toy because that is Sunbow radically changing the character design from what the original toy looked like that's not the toy's fault it's not the toy's fault that it's inaccurate to the cartoon um, you know it, maybe it's a weird one to use because it was never intended to be like a robot with a head in the original Diaclone line. So it's kind of weird. That's why it has no head. Um, but here's the thing about the toy. If you look at it within its own bubble. And the 80, 84 toy line in and of itself. I've always argued that this mold offers a play pattern. That isn't available with any of the other Autobot cars. You had to get the much higher priced Optimus Prime. In order to get a similar you know, battle station play pattern out of it. And I thought that give that gave the, the character like a bit of a boost. And the toy is not nearly as bad as a lot of people want to claim that it is because it is offering something different. And if you were, you know, and really it's just the rose tinted glasses that make you go, well, that's a bad toy. It's not. It's really not. In its own world, it's fine. Now, I will not, I won't, 
Now, now I will give you this. The robot don't look that great, even if I ignore the flat head. Uh, it's the play value of the toy that keeps it, me from calling it bad. Uh, but I will acknowledge it's not going to be that high up on the list. But for its time, I think it's better than a lot of people today claim that it is. Well, um, we're just going uh, straight to the top on that one. We're just going straight to the top on that one. Masterpiece Ironhide and Thus Ratchet is still one of my favorite molds of all time. I think that toy is, I feel like that is like the one of the last real strides in Masterpiece Magic Engineering. Where they could just make this completely, like, completely different alt mode turn into a very svelte and very animation accurate robot. Like the, the tricks that toy does in order to transform is really impressive. The engineering on that toy is phenomenal. It's a reason why it was my toy of the year when the, when the when the ratchet when the Ironhide rather came out, and then of course Ratchet gets all the different tools and accessories to give him a lot more character and to make it look a little bit more accurate to him. It's a fantastic toy. I don't think I have to argue that point. It's just a really really good Ratchet, one of the best ones as a matter of fact. Now, here's the interesting thing. Um, this brings us to the original Voyager class movie Ratchet. And you know me on this channel. I'm not a big fan of movie aesthetic toy, you know, characters, you know. They're just big piles of, you know, they're just, they're, you know, to me, they're just gray skeletal robots with car shrapnel glued onto them that just doesn't look cohesive or solid enough for me to be convinced, like, yeah, that's a Transformer. Um, it's just an aesthetic I don't like. That said... For your 07 movie line, I'm moving them up. I'm putting them in premium. I loved how big and solid this toy was. I loved how just like chunky and solid. It was like, like you could still feel like where the designers and engineers were still in that Cybertron classics mindset of just big chunk parts for, you know, like in like big hunks of the vehicle becoming parts of the robot, you know, and combine that with, like, the automorph trick that didn't get in the way at all, and, like, yeah, I'm absolutely happy with that toy. It's one of the few movie toys where, like, if I still, like, I still remember enjoying it, even after, even with my, my jaded eyes, and, like, oh, my God, no, nothing new in my Transformers. No, um, even... <laughs> I like new stuff. I'm, I'm hyperbolizing myself. Um, even like even with me, just like fed up with movie aesthetic transformers, I still really like that ratchet toy. Because back in the 07 toy line, a lot of them didn't fall into the pit that a lot of the modern ones do of over complexity and o overly busy visuals. So that ratchet can stay. He's still very high up on my list. Now that said, we do have to move on to the movie Ratchet. Uh, this, these, the movie masterpiece Ratchet. I will admit, I don't own this one. I've never had firsthand experience with this one. All I can do is glean from what I have seen of the toy and what I have seen of others messing with the toy in images and videos, in order to make a judgment call on this. And I will flat out say yes, it does look like an extremely impressive screen accurate figure. I do have. I mean, I mean, I, I do have, I do have a masterpiece movie toy. It's a very, very impressive thing. So I know exactly what they can do with that engineering style and with that, uh, char with those character designs. So, okay, fine. I will admit these are really, really good. Um, I will bump it up. I will, I will go ahead and give it Holy Grail because from everything I've seen, it's not one of those masterpiece toys. Like masterpiece toys are almost always going to end up Holy Grail unless they do something really egregious that just causes them to fumble and fall down the list and to my knowledge that ratchet toy didn't do any of that you know i never i would never say it's better than the g1 style because i just think that toy has you know there, there's some efficiency to that toy that i think the movie style masterpieces lack but i will admit when a toy is just really impressive it's just really impressive we're moving into Prime Ratchet now, which, because this is done alphabetically, weird sorting method of my folders, Prime Beast Hunters goes first, um, which it really shouldn't. 
It really shouldn't. In fact, I'm going to supersede this. We're going to talk about that one later. Let's talk about the normal Prime Deluxe first. How about that? All right, so we're talking about we're talking about this one. We're talking about this one. There you there you've officially been bumped. Again, this is a really good toy. It's a really good ratchet figure. Um, it's clean. It's intuitive to transform. And I like the little tricks that this ratchet can do. I love the fact that he comes with a pair of blades that can fit in his hands. But the way his hands fold into his vehicle mode means that you can fold the blades down so that they are coming out of his wrists. So they look like they do in the show as these big surgical scalpels that he's just hacking up terror cons with. That's cool. Got not gonna lie, that's cool. Yeah, Ratchet's just a really solid figure. And it's just a really good looking figure too. If you got the American version, if you got the Japanese version, you had to put all the stickers on it, it usually didn't come out looking as good. Uh, but if you got the American version, uh, yeah. Yeah, he a good toy. He's a good toy. I think he's got more going on than the Cybertronian animated. So we're gonna put him up. we're gonna put him above there. Uh, now we can talk about the Beast Hunter one, which I have to go back a few slides for. Let's see, there we go. I'm not sure what they were thinking with this one. So, if you weren't paying attention at the time, the idea of the Beast Hunter retools was to add some more primal or animalistic elements into the existing Prime toys and, you know, to give them their different retools. So, RC kind of had this mermaid aesthetic with, like, fins added to her vehicle mode uh the most famous one i think is knockout because they added alligator elements so everyone called him crock out but things like that you know and like megatron had elements of like a g1 shark Decon added to him like there's a lot of like inspired choices in there that just comes up with some really cool looking designs for these characters but at the same time we got this ratchet with some rocky elements, not really animalistic in nature. Uh, very like, he got a retool to his head that made him look very like Transmetal 2 Dinobot for some reason. Um, and the colors just feel disjointed. Like the colors just feel weird and randomly chosen. They're not very cohesive. They don't look very, very good. Um, and you switch out the weapon. You switch out the weapon so he doesn't even get to do the cool knife thing anymore. Uh, so this one is disappointing. This one is disappointing. Uh, this goes bargain bin. It's just an ugly version of Ratchet. Now, I decided to do just American releases unless they're exclusive. So uh, one of the things, there is a repaint of it in Japan. I elected not to add to this list, which is actually takes that heavy retooling and rolls with it by calling him a Decepticon. And that's actually probably the best thing you could do with such a weird take on Ratchet. But nevertheless, um, yeah, it's not an impressive one. It's just meh. Uh, we move on. So I love throwing Q Transformers into these lists because they are so weird, but they are fun. And I am on record as saying Ratchet, uh, the Ironhide and Ratchet mold, again, is one of the best molds that they have. Aside from the fact that they didn't have to rework it in any way like they did some of them in order to fit the Q Transformer aesthetic. They just look like tiny versions of them. And the big block nature of their vehicle modes gave them a lot more to work with with their, with their robot modes. So they just come off as these super cute little takes on, you know, in this case, Ratchet. And it's adorable. It's doing absolutely nothing wrong. As far as that line goes, it's about as perfect as you can get. And if I'm viewing all of these in their own little nutshell, I'm almost tempted to holy grail him because he's that he's that cute and good. Um, I'm not gonna go that nuts. I'm not gonna go that nuts. Um, I, I will say like for what you're buying, he is really really good in that line. He's one of the best ones in that line. So we're gonna put him up there uh, for for that measure. All right, what do we got now? I think we got another movie one on the on the on the deck here. This is the Revenge of the Fallen, and this one I was not as happy with. So this is late Revenge of the Fallen deluxe sign because they they still did a repaint of the Voyager, and then they did the deluxe later on. Uh, and I just wasn't as big of a fan of this one. Like like I said, a lot of dark the like a lot of the Revenge of the Fallen deluxes got overly complicated for what they were trying to do, and I felt like 
I felt like Dark of the Moon accomplished in fewer steps what the dark with the rise of the with the revenge of the fallen was doing. Man, I'm, I'm getting so many of the names mixed up in my head now. Oh, yeah. Nevertheless, I wasn't terribly fond of the figure. I wasn't terribly fond of it. Um, I can put it. Let's see. Where do we put it? Where do we put it? Um. Let's see. Uh, so trying to look, trying to look over this. The Dark of the Moon ended up like right in the middle of retail release. I'm actually going to put that one at the bottom of retail release. Yeah, I, I mean, it's an okay figure. It's just, I don't know. It it didn't it didn't click with me the way I was hoping it would. All right, we mentioned Siege Ratchet before. Now he's actually up to deck to actually talk about. So this is the infamous Walgreens exclusive one when they first started doing Walgreens exclusives and everyone went nuts because the distribution on it was horrible and everyone had a hard time getting a hold of it. It's still a pretty rare figure. We've got one. Where is it? Yeah, I got one right here. In camera view. Yeah. Um, it's expensive. Because these things were very rare. That said, it's actually a pretty good figure. I like the fact that it comes with so many different accessories that Iron High did not have. For it being an exclusive, it makes it feel like it's worth tracking down if you could get it for retail price. Um, there's better ratchets today. Today, I would say don't pay unless you like absolutely love the aesthetic it went for. What I like about the figure itself is the fact that it came with so many accessories, including things that hadn't been included in a retail level ratchet or Iron Hide before like the missile launcher from the original G1 Toys Battle Skiff. You know, that actually works. That's actually cool to throw in, you know, you know on top of just Ratchet's regular tools. So it's a really good, it's a really good figure. It's a really good figure if you like the Cybertronian aesthetic that they went for on it, and I do. I do. I think it's a very, very solid take on Ratchet. Solid enough to end up back up on premium. Ratchet's getting a I don't know if you noticed, Ratchet's got a lot of good toys. Like, Ratchet's one of those characters that I think the 07 movie just kind of pushed into, like, oh, yeah, he was part of the OG crew, and we, we always need a medic because they're always in battles. So, Prime did him, Animated did him, Cyberverse kind of, but he really wasn't that major of a player. Um, point being, Ratchet just is one of those that just keeps coming back. And he just keeps being relevant in Transformers, which is always great to see. Um, so yeah, like and it's, it shows like a lot of his toys end up being pretty good, and it's gonna continue to be good because now we're up to Studio Series Voyager. I'm going to ignore. I'm going to ignore the outcry over the size and price of this one. I fully acknowledge. Um, yes, it is. A, it is a Voyager because of part density and number of parts, um, but otherwise it is just a very large deluxe toy. But that said. It's a pretty good one, and in fact, I call it better than the Ironhide that came out before. It felt like there were a few tolerances that were fixed in this release, as opposed to the Ironhide. Uh, and notably, transforming them into the ambulance mode is a lot nicer, and I don't feel like I'm like having to like cram parts together in the front as much as I was Ironhide. So this ratchet actually ends up being a much higher favorability for me. And again, I think I think I think he's a premium figure. I think he's a premium figure. There's a lot of engineering going into it that makes him really, really good. I'm actually debating bumping him up. I'm actually debating bumping him up. Because the advantage of him being a Voyager is like the engineering level on it gets to be so much better despite how like small he is as a Voyager class, which does make him a much more satisfying figure overall. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna bump him up. I'm going to bump him up. As far as retail ratchets go, yeah, he's the best one we've ever had. Just, you know, as far as, like, G1 retail release ratchets, yeah. Yeah, he, he is one of the best ones we've had. The Bumblebee ratchet I've kind of tossed about a few times here because, overall, I do like the figure, but the times I've gone back to mess with it, it, I, it hasn't clicked with me the way it did when it was fresh. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, I, I feel like... Upon repeated playing with it, 
it just doesn't feel as solid as when I first remembered getting it out of the box and transforming it for the first time. I like a lot of the inside out engineering that it does. That part is kind of fun. And I like the take. I like the style of the alt mode even. Uh, but I'm not... My fondness for the mold has waned. Which is weird. You know, so like once the freshness is worn off, I just kind of look at it and go, oh, that's okay. It was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as just ra as ratchet toys go, yeah, that was okay. It's nothing, nothing terribly thrilling to it. All right, the studio series. Um, yeah, how do we grade this one? How do we grade this one? So the toy itself is fine. Like the toy, the toy itself is fine. Um, he he gets the buzzsaw weapon that a lot of the ratchets previous managed to you know managed to leave out. Um, the what's kind of big on them is like the proportions are correct which is something the studio series goes for a lot um like this is again in that realm of like good but i'm not like thrilled with it it's like kind of somewhere in the middle it's kind of somewhere in the middle i will say i think it's better than the dark of the moon i will say it's better than the dark of the moon just because we've had so much time to figure out how to engineer that toy better so yeah um, that's kind of where i'm sitting on that one Oof, oof, oof. Okay. So this is the Unite Warrior Ratchet. And we've talked about this in a similar way when I talked about uh, good and bad Iron High toys. Because one of the bad Iron High toys we talked about is the Combiner War one. Because the, the body that was used for it just felt so unlike Iron High. Because it's very scrawny and thin. It's got a bunch of kibble hanging off its back. It just does not feel like the character. It feels like he's crowbarred in. And Ratchet follows suit with that. It just doesn't feel like a mold that is supposed to be Ratchet. Um, it's just, he's scrawny. He's kibble loaded. He's just messy. He's just a lot messier than I want my, my, my Ratchets to look. And he's got elements crammed into him, like the window chest. Like, it just looks so bad on that mold, because you can tell that mold was never designed for detail like that. Uh, yeah, the flimsiest of representations for Ratchet. It, not a good one. Not a good Ratchet whatsoever. And that brings us to Universe 2 Ratchet. Now, I've talked about my grievances with this toy. I think for its age and for its design, it's way over complicated. This was in the uh, this was in the dark of the this in the, no Revenge of the Fallen mindset of toys where even the generation style stuff the G1 characters were kind of over involved and over thought out and this I, this ratch is absolutely over de over engineered and over thought out uh, it ends up looking messy in vehicle mode the white plastic makes it act, makes all the seams and the cracks through it look even worse than it did on Ironhide. Um, I still don't think the weapon makes sense. It's just a big that big block weapon that I still do not like. Um, yeah, like the one trick to it I like is that the fact that that window, like the window, like the deep machine details slide up. That's a neat trick, but that's like literally the only trick to it that I actually like. Um, it's still just a messy figure. It's a messy figure overall. And you know the other element that I can't get past on this, the one thing we kind of ignore a lot is the fact that uh, Ratchet is never actually an ambulance. He's just a white van because he's repainted from Ironhide, who is not nearly big enough to be a proper ambulance. And he's definitely not shaped like a proper ambulance. You know, he's just close. So we kind of ignore the fact that Ratchet's inaccurate. This is an SUV. This ain't a van. This is an SUV. You know, take your kid to soccer practice, not the hospital in this thing. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm a move it down. I'm gonna put it top of bargain bin because at least it's got the red coloring. It doesn't look as dull as the Earthrise, but, ugh, never been happy with that mold. And there we go. Simple as that. Twenty one ratchets in their place. Now, of course. It's all just my opinion. I have probably put someone's favorite Ratchet toy very low on this list. I may have been incorrect on my listings on some of the movie ones, because I will admit some of my exposure is a little bit limited. But that said, that's just my opinion.
Uh, you're free to have your own and to debate it in the comments as long as you keep it civil, please. So, that's what we got for the day. Thank you everyone for watching. I will see you next time.